Okay, so everyone, by now we have accumulated a good set of laws and rules that we can use with differential calculus. There's just one more certain scenario that we want to focus on, and that's when we have a function inside a function. So everybody, let me introduce the chain rule. So, the chain rule. Let's say we want to find the h prime of x, and the h of x is actually compiled from two functions that are inside one another. This, again, will become more apparent when I actually explain what's going on. So, let me give you an example of when we would apply the chain rule, and why we would apply the chain rule. Well, let's say that the h of x was equal to 2x plus 5 raised to the power of 3. We technically have two functions inside one another here. We have the overall arcing function, generally denoted by the g of x, and we have the internal bracket, the f of x. And we need to differentiate these components in different orders and different structures. So, I will go through and show you how to differentiate, and then I'll annotate and explain what I did. Again, to some degree, this is like applying the power rule. We have a coefficient outside the bracket, and we have an exponent up there. Imagine that this is just like our variable, our variable x that we generally have, our input, if you will. So this is a case. We bring the 3 down to the front, and we multiply 3 by 2. Again, it's sort of like power rule, it's just we have a different x in the middle. 2 times 3 is equal to 6. We then rewrite the bracketed function as it is, but we subtract 1 from the exponent, and hence it's raised to the power of 2. But hang on, we've just applied the basic power rule there. There is a little bit extra we need to do. Because this isn't really x, this is actually another function inside the overarching function, we actually need to differentiate what is inside. We need to find the derivative of x plus 5. Okay, so how do we define the derivative of x plus 5? Well, it's the same as having x raised to the power of 1. We apply the power rule, that rule that uh, many mathematicians worked out from uh, going through first principles. We move the exponent down to the front to get 1x, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent, so we have x to the 0. x to the 0, anything to the power of 0, is just 1. So we end up with 1. And the derivative of a constant is actually 0. Why is this the case? Well, let's think about it. Let's say we had a line of y equals 5, just like this term here, 5. It's going to be a flat horizontal line. There's no slope. The slope is equal to zero. The derivative of a constant is zero because we have no change in y relative to change in x. There's no change at all. For every single x value, there is no change in y. y is always 5. And that's why the derivative of a constant is zero. But getting back to this chain rule here, we can simplify this a little bit. We can actually multiply that 1 by the 6 out in the front. And we can get 6x plus 5 5 raised to the power of 2 as our result to the chain rule. So now, let's write a generic equation, or a generic process, to differentiate anything that is chain rule capable. Now, just to actually explain it, we know how to use chain rule if there's a bracketed term involved, and if there's actually an exponent, generally, to the bracketed term, or a coefficient out the front. So you look for a function within another function. You probably know what functions are based on your previous experience with algebra. But just to recap, in case you've forgotten, a circle is not a function. Because we have multiple x-coordinates for one y-coordinate. We have multiple inputs resulting in multiple outputs. And as a result, it's not a function. Whereas if we have a linear equation, 
we do the vertical line test and we see there's one for one. So this is a function. And that's how we get a function inside a function, and that's how we recognize when to apply a chain rule. And again, it's just like the power rule. Remember that rule we studied two episodes ago? It's just the same as that. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, go through what I've got here. So if we have the h of x, and there's a function inside another function, so we have the g f of x, um, then the h prime of x is going to be equal to, uh, if we're, in fact I'll put this into a more generic form, just to help you out, uh, but let's say we actually had coefficient a, like I said before, f of x to the n, then we would get n multiplied by coefficient a, f of x as it is, to the n minus 1, f prime of x. You may notice the function gets longer. It's just like the product and quotient rule that we did in the last two videos. And it applies that same logic there. So now, let's have a go at another couple of equations. Let's actually um, have a go at uh, something that involves fractions. Let's say that we have our function h of x involving a bracket with five lots of x squared plus 3x to the 3 plus 8 fifths of x to the 2. How would we apply chain rule? Well, something I probably should actually say and recommend as an extension activity is to look into how the chain rule actually works in terms of, in terms of dy dx that change in y relative to that change in x. It's a great extension if you're interested, but we're just going to go with my generic form here, where we have it in the form of n, a, and uh, f of x, as I showed up here, or a to the f of x, n. So in order to do this, to find the derivative or the slope of such a function that involves a bracketed term or a function inside a function, then what we do is we bring the uh, exponent down, and we get 10 lots of, and then we would just repeat the bracket as it is. And again, it's to the power of 1, because it's 2 take 1. And we take the derivative of what's inside the bracket. So this overarching term is like the g of x. What's in the bracket is like just having the variable x there, and then you just apply the power rule to some degree. And then you just take the derivative of what's in the bracket, which could be regarded as f of x. That's the function inside a function philosophy, uh, philosophy. And I really recommend sort of studying that a bit more and uh, understanding it to really get an appreciation of the chain rule. So now when we take the derivative of what's in the bracket, we're obviously going to use the power rule on these terms. We identify it's the sum rule because they're all plus together. So we just uh, differentiate each individual term. So we get 2x, because again we're moving the exponent down to coefficient position, plus 9x squared, plus 8 over 5. Again, that's x to the 1. We subtract 1, it's just going to be 8 over 5 times 1. And then we write that in the bracket there. And we've used chain rule to differentiate involving that equation there. Chain rule does take a lot of practice. It is conceptually very heavy. I have brought a brief introduction into this series. I'd recommend that you use our formulae uh, have it there where you're studying and doing some practice questions. And I'd also recommend that you actually um, try a few more examples. And if you're interested, try and expand your knowledge on chain rule because it's one of the most difficult um, differential laws to get your head around, especially the function side of function concept, which you may not have came across a lot in algebra. But uh, again, do a little bit of research. Hopefully it's helped. It gave you a generic form which involves actually bypassing some of that conceptual stuff that can sometimes be a bit confusing. But uh, again, chain rule is the last of our major differential rules. We're going to be moving on to some exponents and uh, logarithm rules, and also looking at some other cool applications of differential calculus in the next few episodes. I'll see you then.